Welcome to Allies or Enemies. I'm Jess. And I am Sean. And today we are looking at all 12 currently available Tiny Epic games. And we're doing a new ranking. We did one a couple of years ago, and that was just of 10 of the games. It was missing dungeons, it was missing Vikings, and we've had two more years to play all of these. If, however, you live in the future and Crimes is released, we don't have that one yet because that's how time works and we're just never going to keep all the way up to date with them. But as of right now, where we are in the timeline, uh, there are 12 available, so we're going to talk about those. And this list is obviously very subjective, so there's a few caveats for us. Is We've only played these at two players, so it's definitely going to reflect a two-player experience. And we are trying to rank them based on the, ex the base game only because we only have a few of the expansions. And I know the expansions can make a difference for some of the games. Yeah, I know, especially the early ones, the expansions or the second editions or anything else. But we just we got to rank on what we got. And we do mostly have the newer editions. So don't worry, we don't have the first edition Defenders or Kingdoms. So we're going to be talking about new editions of everything. But even when we have the expansions, we're just going to cut them out. But we might, we'll mention them when we get to those games. And we'll mention how we know that those make it better or how we played with them. And so we know that they make them better. So let's kick off with number 12. Number 12 is Tiny Epic Tactics, and we just talked about how it does make a difference that we mostly play these at two, and just our personal preferences on types of games, and this is certainly a big example of that. I know a lot of folks who would have this at the top half of their list, but what it is, Tiny Epic Tactics, if you're familiar with stuff like Shining Force or Final Fantasy Tactics, is that kind of sort of game. You got four guys each on your team, and you're moving around, you're fighting each other, you're trying to take these control points, so kind of like the control point maps on Overwatch, and each of the four different figures you have can be represented by a whole bunch of different cards. There's all different kinds of characters that have all different kinds of powers that you can mix in and out, and you're just fighting over these control points. Yeah, and I was not familiar with any of the video games that you just threw out there because this isn't the type of game I play. So I just I found it a bit tricky because it went a bit quick. My people got killed off too fast before I really got a sense of how to use them. And, and my feelings got a bit hurt. So <laughs> <laughs> this was just a, a tricky one for me. Yeah, I think that that is a, for folks who don't like that sort of fighty thing, this is, it's just, it's just aggressive all the time. That's kind of what it is. And I do agree. It just, it goes a little bit quick. It was a little lighter than I wanted it to be, but there are a bunch of cool options with the characters. And I did find them interesting. And I think, um, I, I definitely liked it more than you liked it. And it's one I would be interested to play again, especially with the other maps as well. But it finds itself a 12 on our list. Number 11 is Tiny Epic Max. And the selling point for me for this one is the epic mech suits that you actually put your meeple into if you can manage to upgrade them. They look amazing. And in Tiny Epic Mechs, it's turn programming. So you lay out what directions your, your meeples are gonna go. And so it leads to chaos as you end up stumbling into each other. So again, this could be one that probably works better at more players when the map fills out more and you end up more with those unexpected fights. The tricky for this as well is the combat. They did try and simplify it by making it like a rock, paper, scissors style, but I, I felt like, I don't know, I just didn't quite work for me. Yeah, there definitely, there wasn't enough to the combat and there wasn't enough combat. This felt like it was a lot more of an area control game where you want to leave out these little landmines and stuff, but you're getting the bulk of your points from where you left your things, your landmines and your turrets. And it felt like you should get more for like smashing up the mechs. Also the mechs, while they're very cool and they are, it's very cool. It's very fun to put them in the thing and to attach all of the weapons to the mech suit. It, after a little bit feels like a little, like, oh, I don't want to keep building this all the time. Like, it just feels like you're doing a lot of putting it together, taking it apart. Those are some things that you might have a little bit of a tricky with and that we had a bit of a tricky with. 
And that's why it is number 11 on our list. Number 10 is Tiny Epic Kingdoms. And Tiny Epic Kingdoms is the first game that the tiny that existed in the Tiny Epic series. And it's it's a pretty interesting game. You you're kind of you're moving up these different tracks and you've got three different resources that you're managing and those get you population or they move you up this magic track that gets you different bonuses or they move you up this castle track which gets you a lot of points or you are also just um, taking area as well at the same time and all of this different stuff leads to points in different ways and it's an interesting action selection game I think the reason that it's low is a lot of it just has to do with it being early. The production isn't quite there. The art isn't quite there. Mechanically, though, it's pretty sound. And from what I understand, with the expansion, it kind of fixes any of the problems that we have with it, where some routes seem a little too strong, like the castle in the in the original game. Um, but we haven't played it with the expansion, so I don't know. I would be curious if it does, because one of the interesting routes that make each player's character race so different is the magic. Mm -hmm. And we always found it never seemed worth going up the magic because you didn't see the payoff didn't seem worth it. But that's kind of the asymmetry behind it. Mm -hmm. So it'd be really interesting to try it. But it quite a dive in for the first one of making it a 4X game all in a small box. And I do like the two player version because there is a like a third type of meeples that come out. So often we end up attacking those meeples because they give us points instead of each other. Yeah, yeah, having that, and that's a second edition thing. Well, there were the meeples and there was something in the first edition, but the second edition two player game um, works a lot better. And so we've, I think we own the first edition, but use the second edition rules. And yeah, and it's fun. It would, I definitely still recommend, especially for a 4X game in a tiny box, but it's number 10. Number nine is Tiny Epic Defenders. And this was the second Tiny Epic game they released. So similar to Kingdoms, a little bit dated, but it is a cooperative game that there are different locations on the board. And so as a team, you're moving around the location and trying to put out fires at all the various ones. They do a neat job of all the various locations do different actions. So it does feel like you have various decisions to make and enough differences between the locations and the bosses that each game feels a little bit different, but it is still pretty samey. You're, you know, you're still mm -hmm. moving, putting out fires that I think that's why it's so low, but I do appreciate almost the simplicity of the cooperativeness. It just needed a little bit more. And I feel like they did that little bit more in their newer cooperative games too. And that's another reason this was a lot higher on our list the first time, yeah. but since then Dungeons has come out, we've played zombies a lot more, um, and they just, they're better co-op games they do more I'll, and again i'll say with the expansion apparently it adds a ton of this a ton a ton more to this game um and just makes it a lot 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 better from what i understand i've not played with the expansion though so there that is again that is why right now it's number nine At number eight is Tiny Epic Western, and this is probably the most divisive game that they have released. I think it's the fourth one that they put out. It's fairly early. And to their credit, Tiny Epic Western has really like interesting different mechanics. I don't know of another game that really plays quite like it, where you have got, um, you've got six different buildings in your little Western town, and the big core of it is you're putting out your cowboys it's a worker placement game and you're trying to build buildings onto your building you're trying to build extra buildings and then you score points based on the symbols and how those symbols relate to this track where you're moving up which symbols are going to score more points that sounds a little bit complicated it's not really that complicated but the divisive part of it comes from this poker hand mechanic so between those buildings there's one card and you've got a secret card in your hand. And so you're playing this little game of kind of three card stud with those two cards and your secret card and you're playing against the other players. And so a lot of the game comes down to what is that secret card. And so there can definitely be a lot of feeling of the luck of the two cards you get dealt when you're choosing that card. 
um, can have can really have a big impact, especially if you have a bad go three or four in a time. I think that's the key thing is I have felt so differently about this game, just game to game. Mm-hmm. And before I was kind of like, well, you do have a lot of information because you can tell which buildings you are likely to win with the information that's out there. But then it just felt like the last game we played, I couldn't win anywhere somehow. I don't even know how that happened. You'd think I would have a run or suit matching, and like you say, three or four turns, and it just feels like there isn't any catching up. Yeah, we've definitely, I think we've gone back and forth, and it has been 100% related to how we have done. Yeah. So like I had a run of bad luck for two games in a row, and I was like, I hate this game. This is, this is the worst one. And then the last game, I everything went my way. And I was like, you know what? I think I underestimated it. I think it's a really good game. Uh, and I think it is so, because it is that, that bit luck dependent, uh, it feels real good when it works. It feels really bad when it doesn't. So you just got to be okay with having a game that's going to have that much luck in it. But it's, it's, it's interesting either way. And the bullet dice are pretty cool. The bullet dice are cool, yeah. Number seven is Tiny Epic Pirates. And this is a newer one. It was released three ago. It's... Three or four. I don't know. I lose track. <laughs> yeah, but, but you can tell. The production value has stepped up. It does look really good. And you have your pirate ship. And you're going around and you are attacking other ships and you are getting some merchandise and you're trying to sell off that merchandise and bury your gold as well. One of the things I really like about this game is how you pick your actions because it's a rondelle system. So each time you play, you put it out in a different order. So everyone has different orders of actions and you can skip them, but it definitely changes how you play. And I think they did a really interesting job of that. Yeah, I think the tricky here came down to expectations of when you see Tiny Epic Pirates, you think, oh, I'm going to be fighting ships and making people walk the plank and doing all sorts of pirate stuff. Really, it's mostly about gaining those goods and just dropping them off. You're really, it's it's more of a merchant game and it's more of a, a market, like a shifting market system. And that's kind of the most important thing. I guess like Tiny Epic Merchants um, isn't nearly as exciting as Tiny Epic Pirates. But this also might be reflective of playing two players. As soon as you throw some more pirate ships into the ocean, I imagine that there would be a lot more fighting then and feel a little bit more piratey. And that's why it's our number seven. Number six is Tiny Epic Quest. And this is pretty much Tiny Epic Zelda w- with a different name. This feels very zelda e. This feels very Hyrule-y. It feels like you are Link riding around on a Pona, going to different places, but nothing is called those things. There are no actual ocarinas in this game, but it's about as close as you can get without getting in trouble. And it is kind of a zelda e experience. So it's got two different phases to the game. The first phase is you're just moving your dudes around, putting them where you want to go. And then in the night phase, you act out wherever it was that you ended up. So you're trying to go through dungeons to get treasures. You're fighting these goblins. Um, you're building up magic. And to do that, you're rolling dice. But whenever you roll dice, it affects everybody at the table, which is this really interesting mechanic because when you're rolling, it's actually almost the worst time because you take the damage first. But everybody gets to use the torches and whatnot that move you down the dungeon and the magic, which is kind of this complicated and pretty interesting system as well. Yeah, that is the definite benefit is you are always involved. Any action card that gets selected, everybody does. Everyone does the dice rolling. And the push your luck can be really satisfying Mm because if you have the people in all the right spots, you can sometimes manage to do everything you want to get to the end of that temple track and kill that goblin. And those those moments can be like, yeah, I did it. I'm really a warrior of not Hyrule. <laughs> but it, it can also, I don't know, feels a bit long sometimes because it's just so repetitive, I think, with the dice rolling. Yeah, it is, you are kind of doing the same things. They do build up and your magic gives you different bonuses and it does feel a bit like you're going somewhere, but also the last turn does feel a little bit like the first turn. But still, it's Zelda. It's as Zelda-y as you can get. And it is on number six. 
Number five is Tiny Epic Zombies. And this is another cooperative game. And this is one that Sean mentioned in terms of why Defenders probably felt a, fell a little bit lower because it's a great cooperative game. Again, you have different locations you're going to, but all of those tie into the quests that you have to achieve to be able to win the game. And those quests, because you always have three of them, are so different in what you need to do that it really does feel very replayable between the character that you are and they just have like a stack of characters who all look great because there's like a cheerleader and janitor and mall person and it, it all happens in a mall which is awesome and there's some really good touches too in terms of like the vehicles that you can use so you can like jump in a cop car and drive into some <laughs> zombies mm -hmm. and things so it does a zombie cooperative game really well i think it's cool, too, that those characters, the flip side of all of them is a villain. So as many characters as you have is as many villains as you have as well, because they are all zombified versions of themselves, and they all have different powers, too. And this game, you can play it co-op, you can play it competitive, you can play it one versus many, you can play it everyone versus the game. You can play it teams, maybe. I'm not sure if that's true, but there seems to be basically every like different way of playing exists within this game and mostly they work pretty well too we basically just play it at co-op but you can definitely see like you can play it however you want to play it and it's still going to be pretty interesting and it definitely has that that like um dawn of the dead feel to it but it also has these military missions that are like day of the dead and just these little shout outs to all the different zombie movies and i i love george a romero i love zombie movies so and it does a really good job too of simplifying the combat and which does work really well and that's why it's our number five number four is the newest tiny epic game tiny epic vikings and i was tempted to put this even higher and jess was like sean cool your jets uh, we just got it and fair, but it's it's a really promising one to me. And it's interesting. This is the first one that has had a board. And the cool bit is the art. I love the art. If you've seen our review, um, we talk about the art a whole bunch. And I think that's worthwhile because I think it's a huge step forward for the Tiny Epic series. And the system to it is it's this game. It's mostly an area control game. But you've got a hand of cards and you draft your cards at the beginning of each round and you play out those cards and they have one action it's usually a simple action you're sailing you're dropping down vikings um that's most of what you're doing you're building some stuff and then if you have played the correct cards before or if you have runes from the places that you've taken over you can also trigger a second action which is usually kind of stronger so you're trying to play those cards in the right order you're also fighting each other to get these runes and all of that is based on the power of the different gods and those move based on taking the different islands or when people die in battle and go to valhalla so there's ways to influence them at the same time but really you just you just want to take the most islands you can and get the most runes and you're probably going to win I do really like how the gods increase in power depending on basically how many times the islands have shifted between the players. So it isn't necessarily that you've been in control of one for a long time, or even if that's the case, they probably won't be that strong. But instead, it's that constant battle between players. And it does work pretty well at two by just having some extra folks on the islands and then a, a random card that gets flipped for the battling too, which I appreciate for an area control game. Yeah, it's so rare that you have an area control game that works at two players. And it is cool that, yeah, you want... You want to be in control of stuff that people were fighting over. You don't want to be in control and then just sit on it. It is better when you've got when you've got the embattled ones. So you've got to win the hard battles more than you got to win the easy battles, which I think makes sense. Yeah, it does for Vikings because you're always fighting each other and it does capture that pretty well. And that's why it's our number 4. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Number three is Tiny Epic Dungeons, which is one of the newer ones to get released, and it looks really good. It comes with actual miniatures for your characters, and it's a dungeon crawling game. I love dungeon crawlers, and so you're doing the usual things. You are exploring the dungeon, you're fighting goblins, you're hoping to discover treasure to level up your characters and get stronger. 
until if you if you make it that far you take on a, a big boss and there's a really good selection of characters to choose from so you can you know be a big smasher or a healer or a range attacker and there's also a whole mix of the bosses that you you can attack as well it, one of the things i will say is it's it is hard out of the gate yeah yeah this game the kind of the base rules are expert level like you're starting at expert level so if you're really good at dungeon crawlers if you know that okay i'm going to need to build my sets of armor because that's going to give me these big bonuses and like this is how i can manage my time best because time management's a big part of this game you'll be fine right out of the gate but if you're like us it's going to feel very hard so i would strongly suggest looking on bgg i think the publishers even had suggestions but a lot of people have had suggestions but out of the gate don't think oh yeah i can do this it's just it's going to feel a little frustrating but man the that they fit the minis in that box when i look at the stuff that is in that box it feels like that box is partially a tardis <laughs> Like, it must be bigger on the inside. Because every time I put it away, I think, well, this isn't going to go away. This can't, and then magically it fits in the box. It blows my mind, this one. And this is one I did have higher than you because I do like dungeon crawlers more. But because of what you said, that is our number three. Number two is Tiny Epic Dinosaurs. And Tiny Epic Dinosaurs is really a farming game but you've got a dinosaur farm which is way better than a normal farm that's the best kind of farm you can have and this is it's a worker placement game so you've got kind of it's not quite a board but you've got a bunch of larger cards that kind of form the board of where your workers can go and you're gaining stuff to feed your dinos you're moving around your fences for your dinos you're finding eggs for your dinos you're catching dinos sometimes getting hurt in the process and then you're adding those to your little ranch of dinos. And as you put those out, they need to be fed and they will breed and they'll keep breeding and they'll cause you trouble with their breeding. So you got to think about how you're putting out the fences and there's, um, there's goals to complete. And it's just, it's fun and solid. And I love this kind of game. I love Euro games. I love farming games. I like worker placement games. I love dinosaurs. And this has more dinosaur meeples than any other game that we own, which again, blows my mind for a tiny box. Yeah, because the main dinosaurs are one sculpt for the different kinds and they look great and they're literally tiny wooden pieces, but there's also the special dinos that they did individually, which is really fun to get. So we usually go for the, the purple special ones just to have those individual dino icons. But yeah, it does work really well. And there is a bit of sense of risk when you go to try and capture a dino because you might get injured or you might end up with two of them. All of a sudden you have more dinos than you can fit. A carnivore breaks a gate, eats a herbivore and chaos ensues. It's, it's just great. It's a great dinosaur game like this is one of my favorite dinosaur games and it's a solid farming game and we picked it up on vacation which i feel like always makes us like games a little bit more um, but it's i'm very happy with it being number two and number one if you haven't guessed it is tiny epic galaxies which is actually one of the first few that they made and it is it is just solid this is the first tiny epic game that we played because most people said it was their favorite so it was our first foray into it and it works really well you have these different planets that come out and you roll your dice for the actions that you select almost yahtzee style and until you lock them in and then you perform those actions and you're just trying to go up the tracks to get those planets and and have the most points at the end but there's enough in there that keeps it always interesting i think the main thing is that the follow mechanic so you if you you might be able to copy the other person's action so it's always part of the order of when you do things and whether you copy now or save it that keeps you invested every turn yeah it's cool because it's that follow mechanic that a lot of games have that but usually it's a guarantee um this one you are spending a very valuable resource in order to be able to copy that so you really have to decide okay is this the time that i copy it and when you're picking your order as well thinking like i'm gonna make them copy up here because then they can't copy down here and then they're not going to be able to advance up the planets 
And Tiny Epic Galaxies feels more unique, I think, than anything else that they've put out. And it is tiny in its box and it has a tiny footprint on the table, which is kind of a plus. I appreciate how big they've made some of the later games in the series, but with a Tiny Epic game, sometimes you do just want a game that is legitimately tiny. And this, you just need to fit a few little cards on the table and you're good to go. And it doesn't overstay its welcome either. Mm -hmm. It plays really quickly. And it's interesting because this was our number one without ex the expansion, but Beyond the Black makes it even better. So number one with a bullet with Beyond the Black for sure. Yeah, Beyond the Black's really solid expansion. It really makes it, it goes from being a really solid quick game to a really solid full game. And yeah, I'm impressed with this. And I think this is the one that kind of put the Tiny Epic series on the map and has built to the success that it's had now um and it's still the best one it's our number one and that is it that is our ranking of the 12 current tiny epic games tiny epic crimes is coming out soon and we're really excited to play it we haven't played it yet but we think we'll like it and we're looking forward to seeing what comes next and the Tiny Epic series, I think a reason that we have featured it so much, we've talked about it so much, is that we are in a tiny London flat and we can only fit so many normal sized games. And so it's nice being able to have 12 different boxes, 12 different experiences that take up like half the space of like a scythe or a dwellings of Elder Vale. They're all pretty full experiences and it's just, it's fun to have all those different experiences that fit on our shelf. And at least the top half of those I would play like any day of the week, even the top half of the bottom half. <laughs> yeah, and we know our list is very subjective. So please do put your list or your favorites or your least favorites in the comments. And as usual, please like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time for another game.